Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the first video of 2020 and I'm putting up this recording of drawing my boys, Donald, Jose and Panchito, aka the Three Caballeros. If you haven't seen the 1944 movie or the 2019-ish animated series, check them out on Disney Plus if you have it in your country. Anyway, these were the first sketches of 2020, so it's fitting that the recording of January's video also be them. It's also fitting because I have some thoughts on drawing fan art, especially now that I'm working like mad to get my art side business off the ground and I'm taking part in this year's EGCon. EGCon's the biggest anime convention in Egypt and it will be on January the 31st. This video will most likely be published right after the event is over due to lack of time. I'm behind on a lot of things that still need to be done. Artwork that needs to be finished and print houses that need to be researched. I don't want to mess this up because of a foolish decision in how I handle printing expenses or by poorly advertising for the event. Like I said before, I still have no real experience especially when it comes to marketing my work. But on the other hand, there really is no time to overthink it. For now, I'm just trying to get as much art done as possible and find a good printing house. I found a good quality print house close to where I live, but the prices are too high. And this is a convention where like more than 80% of your customers are kids at school. So people with a very tight budget. You can't afford to sell anything pricey at a convention like this. And this is probably the thing that's causing me the most anxiety. I don't want to print work that looks very good, but ultimately doesn't sell because the printing and the renting space raise up the cost of each individual item. Anyway, I'll talk about the anime convention in a later video. Now I want to very briefly talk about fan art in general and where I stand from them now that I'm trying to use what limited time after work that I have to build an art side business. There's a lot I want to say about the topic and I can write a whole book if I want it. But I want to keep this video under 20 minutes or so, so I'll try to organize my thoughts and talk about a couple points. Point 1. Straight into it. I 100% believe fan work with pre-existing characters and properties is a great way to improve your skills and I'll keep doing it. I find it a little strange that some known authors and creators look down on fan-made content and this confuses me because did none of them ever create stories of pre-existing characters when they were kids? Did they never create work based on something like Alice in Wonderland or Lord of the Rings or any of the other popular properties of their times? Not even inside their own heads? I find that really hard to believe. And even if they didn't, there's no denying that so many people who today write and draw professionally started out by creating content of things that they enjoy. It's a safe place to build up the skill and the knowledge, and a way to become familiar with the more technical aspects of creating a work of fiction. A baby learns to walk and talk by watching their parents and their older siblings, and a young artist and or writer learns by observing how their favorite artists and writers work, and they start out by imitating them. As they grow and mature, same as when a baby gradually grows into adulthood, they eventually have a voice of their own, because nobody is born with the knowledge. When you sit down and begin working with a property you love, you start thinking about it more critically, and this eventually translates into your original work later on. Why is a character, good or bad, so compelling? Why is a magical world full of wizards and funny words for incantations so believable regardless? What exactly is it about the art direction of a particular series or movie that captivated you? What makes the plot of a story, regardless of the medium it's being told in, interesting and makes you want to finish it to the end? Heck, if even there is no significantly captivating plot, what makes that piece of content worth consuming? And what makes it entertaining or moving? Before we try to learn any of these whys and hows in an academic or non-academic setting, we first learn them implicitly by imitating. Same as when a child learns to speak and speak quite well by simply imitating his or her parents. And this is how any artist or writer eventually arrives at their own quote-unquote style. Your style or your voice is a very interesting amalgamation of everything you experienced and did when you were growing up and learning from your own life events and the artists you look up to. And in that same vein, 
your style is also the subtraction and the absence of many things you haven't experienced or never liked. The second point I'd like to touch upon is that creating fan content for pre-existing properties as a way of opening the door for communicating with a whole lot of other people is freaking amazing because when so many people are interested in the same things as you, the same themes and aesthetics and concepts and storytelling methods and even certain tropes, it opens doors for interesting conversations and a lot more learning on how you can improve your own art and storytelling. And it can also be a great way to put your work out there and eventually gain the confidence to produce and display your original creations. And when I say confidence, I mean the lack of worry about what others think and systematically ignoring my own intense feelings of imposter syndrome. There isn't a single day that goes by when I don't feel incompetent. I don't know about other artists, but I feel that imposter syndrome will always, always be a problem for me. I can become the next freaking legend and I'll still feel like my art isn't up to par with the artists I look up to. I don't think it's a matter of confidence really as much as I think it's always being intensely disappointed in myself that I couldn't do better. I couldn't attain that high quality work inside my head. I know it doesn't make sense for one artist to produce the kind of work a team of artists or a whole freaking studio creates, that's impossible. And yet I can't quite get rid of the feeling that I've fallen short of what I should have accomplished. Here's where a themed convention like EGCon is a good place to gauge your skills in both art and selling in a real-world setting. This is a place where it's in your best interest to be a good fan artist and to genuinely enjoy creating content based on other people's properties. People going to a convention want their favorite anime characters on their products and they look forward to seeing art that's different from all the official art they've already seen elsewhere. Fans want to see other fans' interpretation of their favorite characters and what they personally learn from their journeys. Some fan work is so inspired and so much thought and emotion put into it that it amazes me that these people weren't hired by world-class studios. And when people genuinely like your fan content, there'll be some who'll become interested in your original art as well. Creating fan content is a fun and realistic way of knocking on people's doors and showing them what you have to offer, which is why I strongly believe creating and selling content of existing properties on a small scale in occasions such as conventions can be a great way for unknown artists to gain confidence and show people their work on a familiar ground. And it's so much easier to get people to see what you do when it's a character they actually recognize and can relate to. Very few people are gonna look at your feisty, yandere, dragon, human hybrid OC unless they've seen, say, your Harry Potter fan art first and loved it. The world is too saturated today. And that's just how it is. As an artist, I'm always interested in looking at other artists' work, whether it's fan content or original. But the general audience, the mainstream, will be more attracted to the art of properties that they've already seen in media, be it a book, a movie, a series or a video game. That's normal. It has nothing to do with people not respecting original content. Okay, I gotta get back to work on all the stuff I still have to prepare. That's it from me this month, so thank you so much for watching. Please support little old me by liking this video and subscribing. I've created a new Instagram business page and it'll be where I post snapshots from EGCon. The store is Minimal Creations and you'll find it in the description box under the video. Please follow me there and feel free to suggest art content you'd personally like to see from me printed if you were at an anime convention. Thank you very much again and until next time, hope you have a great day.